time I drive along Lenox Avenue and pass the Morning Gazette, I always think of the time that Andy and the Kingfish put a classified ad in the paper to rent the basement of the Lodge Hall. Yeah, I never will forget. They sent lightning over to the newspaper with the ad. private entrance, respectable neighborhood. Reasonable rent, suitable for office or workshop. Apply Kingfish, Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. How'd that sound to you, Lou? Oh, fine, fine. Anything you say, Duke, you know that. How about you, Jennings? Two artists, my dear Duke, can work any place. Fine, fine. Gentlemen, I'm glad to see that as usual we're in accord. All right, Lou, you go on over to this Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall and rent the room. You get the equipment together, Jennings, see if you can get it all moved over there by tomorrow evening. Right. Your plates all ready? Ready. Good. With that basement room and these new plates, I'll print you a batch of $20 bills you can pass on J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> all right, Lou, I told you get over there and see this kingfish. <laughs> Yes, sir. I know you're going to be very happy in that room. <laughs> can we move our printing equipment in there tomorrow? Oh, sure. You can move in there anytime. My decorator, Mr. Brown, has decorated the place now. Mr. Brown, uh, he's the one who's done the Waldorf Castoria. Okay. See you tomorrow. You being in the printing business, I know you're going to make a lot of money down there. <laughs> How you come with the decorating? Doing a nice, neat job? Yeah, I really doing a neat job. A lot of work to this thing. Well, congratulations. Are you a super fool? Ain't you got no regard for other folks' pinkies? Now look at you. Now look at you. I don't know who the paint looks the better on. You or the wall? <laughs> Ain't too bad a job, though. Yeah, but Kingfish, the trouble is, this ain't never gonna look like a bus class job with that little hole in the wall there. Oh, simple, Andy. I got a little picture up there in the lodge hole. But just cover up the thing. Wait a minute, boy, I'll get it for you. Yeah, go get the thing. Yeah, I'll tag it up here. Uh, you tag it up. Not you, your big clumsy ox. I'll do the tagging. You see, Andy, there's a science to this. You got to tippy tap the nail just right, or else you'll knock. I think you tip it tapped it over a little bit there, Kingfish. What must we do now? Well, nothing to worry about, Andy. We get a bigger picture. There's one up there called Whistler's Mother. That ought to do the trick. Yeah. Well, that does it, Andy.
Who do you mean, spoil it? Oh, like that guy did in St. Louis. Who's to get nosy around here? I don't know. Maybe those two birds upstairs. Suppose they do. Just like in St. Louis.
Yeah, I'll take care of it for you. Yeah, I'll write a card.
will get you no good bump. But don't give me, Sandy. I went down the basement and got the box like he told me. It will sit right there behind the king Behind the printing press? Uh, yeah. King I left that box of candy on the shelf. You must have got the wrong box. That box you got had $10,000 in it. And King Fish, that's oh, Wait a minute. Let's don't get panicked. We got to be calm. Yeah, all of us. We got to be calm. Got to be calm about this thing, Annie. Yeah, but wait a minute, King Fish. Where would these men in the basement get $10,000 in counterfeit money? Well, they'll let's examine the thing. Where would they get $10,000? And first of all, what business is they in? Yeah. They're in the printing business. And in the printing business, in the printing business, in the printing business, yeah. Yeah, and they ain't using nothing but green ink. Annie, putting two and two together, we comes up with one of the nastiest foes we ever run into. Yeah. Them men's is making counterfeit money in our basement. And there ain't but one thing to do. Now, we can't take no chance on fooling from here. Now, you who wait here, and I will run down to the lunchroom and call the police. Nothing to do with it, Kingfish. We'll both go down and call the police. Okay, Andy, this way. You stupid bum, didn't you know that was a closet? Manny, we're going to chomp our own stuff before we get to the lunchroom. I sure wish I knew what was going on around. <laughs> Everything all right, huh, Kingsley? Oh, yeah, Andy, I've covered it over now. With the police coming, we'll go back to the lodge hall and wait for them. Hey, Andy, there ain't no danger now. <laughs> Hello? This is Lieutenant Park, the police headquarters. Cops. Yes, Lieutenant, what can I do for you? Well, we've got sort of a confused call here. Something about counterfeiters in the basement. I thought we'd better check on it before we sent a man over. Oh, yes, yes. Some of the boys must have been up to their old tricks again. You see, Lieutenant, this is a boys' school here, and I'm the headmaster, and... Oh, boys' school, huh? Well, boys will be boys. I'm terribly sorry you were troubled, Lieutenant, but I assure you there'll be no recurrence. I intend to administer a thorough thrashing to the boys. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Anderson. You two have messed this thing up to a fairly well. You get on back to the hotel. I'll handle this. Give me that box of candy, you idiot. I don't think the police has got here yet. I don't see no squad cars. Oh, take it easy, Andy. We ain't got nothing to worry about. All we gotta do is get into the office and wait for them. Yeah, we'll watch for them out the window here. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I've been waiting for you. Ah, uh, see, Andy? They done sent over a clean cool man already. That quick service, all right? Yeah. Listen, we've been expecting you, all right. Now, you see, the thing is... Uh, excuse me. We don't want to take no chances here. Yeah, we don't want no one to know what's going on. We want to play this thing smart. Oh, no, no, no. Get down. Get down. We give you all the dough. We give you all the dough. Now, you see, them dirty crooks rented our basement room. Now, we were snooping around down there, and my friend carried down a box of caramels. And the box of caramels got mixed up with their box of money, and that's how we found out they were counterfeiters. Now, what do you know about that? Very interesting. Have a piece of candy? Oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, we first got wise to these guys when, uh... Uh, Mr. Excuse me for a tune, but this candy you give me here, is this wintergreen or my carbo cherries or something? They're caramels. Mr. You ain't from police headquarters, is you? No. 
Then you ain't no full of birth man, is you? No. I know. You was a candy salesman. That's what you is. You pass not free samples. See there, Andy? No. I'm from downstairs. Oh, well, Andy, as I was saying, I better be getting along. Sit down. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, I think we've wasted enough time. Where's the money? Uh, he want to know where the money is. <laughs> but, uh, do you mean the money that was in the box down in the basement? That's what I mean. He mean the money that was in the box down in the basement, Andy. Yeah, the green money? Uh, the green money? That's right. The green money. I'll give you exactly one minute to tell me where the 10,000 is. Uh, you couldn't make that exactly one hour, could you? Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm afraid we don't understand each other. Well, mister, it's a long story. Well, you see, the thing is, uh, well, it was, as I was... <laughs> I want that money, and I want it now. It took me two years to have those plates made, and I'm not having anyone... Well, you know who that is at that door? That happens to be the police. Yeah, we done called them before. We got the best of you now. All right, come on in, boys. There he is, surround him. Hi, sir. What news? Oh, me. It ain't the police. It's the child who the lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd drop by and pass the time. <laughs> in the basement now. 